Hi, I'm Mike McConville, Director of New Category Development with Horizon Hobby. In this video, we're going to talk about the virtual fence feature of the Sportsman S Plus and how to change uh, from the, uh, the park mode to the virtual airfield mode. Uh, virtual airfield mode sets up a rectangular fence and this is, the fence is a boundary that the airplane will fly inside um, and it flies um, like any airplane would with just the assistance of SAFE it, until it hits the boundaries of the fence and then it turns around on its own and flies back to a, to a, a point and just circles. We call that holding pattern. Anyway, it comes out of the box in uh, park mode. Um, park mode is uh, a circle so that it flies 360 degrees around you um, out to a radius, uh, gives you a lot of distance to fly. But for some places like this, like Eli Field where we are right now, um, we're at a flying field so there are no fly zones. So typically at a flying field or at some parks where there might be a soccer field or something where you just don't want to, you don't want to fly over it, you can change it to uh, air, virtual fence, the airfield mode. When you do this, it lets you fly in the rectangular area that you normally set in front of yourself, but it won't let you fly behind yourself. It comes to the zero line or, what, or the area behind you and it turns around on its own and, and goes back and, and circles in front of you until you've, until you've kind of regained your, uh, your orientation and you can take control back. So just a couple of uh, quick steps. We'll show you first how to change it from uh, park mode to uh, airfield mode and then we'll show you how to actually use airfield mode. To change from virtual fence park mode to virtual fence rectangle or airfield mode, first we flip it over so we have access to the battery. Turn on the transmitter first, that's always best practice. Then we plug in the flight battery and we hear the ESC tone telling us that yes I'm powered up. Now we flip it back over and set it upright and as it starts to look for satellites, we hold the sticks in this position. The left stick we leave alone, we just put the low throttle and leave it there. The right stick we hold in the, uh, the outside corner, so that's full up elevator and full right aileron. And we know it got satellite lock and the mode has changed when you see the ailerons move and you hear the ESC tone telling you that's done. Once that's finished, we can just turn it back upside down and disconnect the flight battery. Now it'll stay in this mode um, until we change it back. So every time we go fly, next flight, every time we power it up, it's always going to be in rectangle mode um, from here evermore until we change it back. And we'll show how to do that in another video. Okay, so now we have the airplane in airfield mode. Um, there's just a couple of simple steps to use airfield mode to set everything properly so it works the way we expect it to. So. First, as always, we flip the airplane upside down to access the battery, turn the transmitter on first, then we plug in the flight battery. We hear the ESC tone telling us that it's powered up. It's not looking for satellites yet because it won't even start to do it until the airplane's sitting upright. So the next thing we do, now the important part here, the transmitter's fine, we don't have to do anything until it's ready to fly. So we want the airplane to be in a certain position when, when it gets satellite locked because that's going to tell it where the runway is and where the area is it should fly. And that position is to set the airplane right on the edge of the runway with the wings parallel to the runway. Now that's very important because that's going to tell the system the direction the runway runs. If we turned it a little bit, it would think the runway was parallel to however the wings were sitting when it powered up. So we'll wait now. Now we hear the tone. We know it got satellite lock. So now that part is finished. It knows the runway is in front of us. It knows that it, the area it can fly is in front and the area it can't fly is behind us. What it doesn't know yet is which direction to, to take off. Of course, we're going to do that manually, but whatever direction we take off is the direction it's going to land itself when we press auto land. So there's one more step that's very important. And that is to tell it the direction. Now today it's a pretty windy day and the wind is blowing from my left. So you take off into the wind as always. So we can taxi out. The important thing here is to not push the throttle up very far. Because what will happen is the first time the throttle exceeds 90%, which is nearly full, 
it will remember that heading. It doesn't have to be pointing straight down the runway, it just has to be pointing in the right direction. And the system knows which way it was facing, so it'll know, it knows the center line of the runway, so it's going to set the heading at that center line, but it doesn't know which way yet. It could be going to my right, could be going to my left. But as soon as my throttle passes, passes 90% for the first time, and it's only the first time it locks that heading and it has it for the rest of the flight. So now I can just take off like normal. So that's an overview of how to set and how to use the Virtual Fence Airfield. For more helpful videos, go to HobbyZoneRC.com.